Greetings, boils and ghouls, and welcome back to Markers and Monsters. I'm your host, Colin, and today I'd like to travel back to the past, 95 years to be exact, and we are going to the 1925 classic Universal Monster film, The Phantom of the Opera, starring Lon Chaney Sr. Now, this is an interesting film, and one that I feel doesn't get as much love as I'd like to see. In the, in the pantheon of the Universal Monsters, you know, Frank, Dracula, Creature, Wolfman, all those guys, uh, Phantom's always kind of like uh, part of the B-Squad, I guess. Kind of the same with Quasimodo from the Hunchback film. And it's kind of a shame, uh, because I really feel that the Phantom... Uh, great look to him great story real gothic -y and spooky and i don't know i love it but i'm getting a little ahead of myself as you can see here i'm just kind of penciling it in a, in a simple portrait and for this drawing we're actually going to forego the use of inks and just do it straight with the markers make it almost like a painting i'll be using pretty much exclusively cool gray markers to give it that old school feel i love doing these black and white ones i think they're a lot of fun and again, going without inks and just kind of doing it more like a painting um, presents a couple different challenges, but uh, it's a lot of fun to work with. And it definitely helps with uh, working with shading, uh, light, atmosphere, stuff like that. As you can see, I'm kind of using my darkest grays here to just kind of get some outlines. and putting it in, not even as an outline, as much as it is just the darkest areas. Uh, usually those are like the lines around the mouth, the nostrils, and I really wanted his eyes to pop out, so I gave those really, really dark, uh, you know, shadows around the eyes there. Back to the film, 1925 Universal uh, decided to make the an adaptation of Gaston Leroux's novel, uh, The Phantom of the Opera, uh, from 1910, where in a mysterious figure haunts the famous Paris Opera House. And uh, this man is obsessed with the opera and wants a specific young woman, Christine, to get the starring role and is kind of training her secretly, uh, you know, speaking through the vents and things like that. She thinks it might be a spirit or a ghost or something like that. But no, it's Eric, the phantom, a deformed figure that dwells in the sewers and catacombs beneath the Paris Opera House. Lon Chaney Sr., of course, was known as the Man of a Thousand Faces, and he often did his own makeup and effects. Uh, really, really cool. He'd use things like little uh, fishing wire with invisible hooks to pull his nose up, and then use grease paint to widen the holes to make it almost look like a skull visage here. Um, a lot of little tricks that he would use that are really fascinating and really interesting, and boy, he really inhabited the characters that he became. I mentioned earlier, too, the uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame, Quasimodo. Yeah, Lon Chaney Sr. was also him in the Universal... Um, um, Hunchback of Notre Dame film, another universal monster-esque classic that kind of gets uh, forgotten. Now, this film is a silent film. That means if you're going to go into this having never seen it before, uh, there's going to be no speaking or anything of that nature. You're going to see some title cards that tell you occasionally what characters are saying, but for the most part, all the acting is done through pantomime through body language through the movement and the dramatic flourishes they make and uh it really adds a great atmosphere to it when everybody's kind of acting real spooky and, and strange like that uh, great watch for halloween and i think this is a good one to show to younger people if they've never seen a silent film before it might be a great introduction um to the great classic silent movies uh, like I said before, I don't know if silent movies get enough of a uh, love. Um, I get why, to an extent. You know, a lot of people, they want sound. They want music and, and sound effects and dialogue and all that kind of stuff. But uh, when you're not, when you just dismiss something just because, oh, it's silent or, oh, it's black and white or whatever, man, you get, you're really missing out. So uh, I know you guys watching my show are, are, are probably... Uh, like the silent films or, you know, at least willing to give it a shot. So that, that's great. Uh, you guys are the best audience in the business, I swear to it. But uh, I digress. Anyway, <laughs> we're in 
we're kind of filling in here with the darkest, uh, the, the blackest blacks as they were. That is a cool gray number 10. It's not quite black. Uh, it's just very, very dark. I don't know how well it shows up on camera. It looks pretty black, but uh, it's almost kind of got a blue brown color to it. Um, we're going to be filling in the background here, and uh, you'll see here with some of the darker colors and the white paint pen, we're going to be adding in a couple little effects. I didn't want it to be just a flat and matte background here, um, so we're just going to make it kind of pop out a little bit with some, you know, light to dark, some gradient transition dots and things like that. Um, but yeah, this was a, a nice challenge to work on, a nice change of pace. One thing I like about the Phantom of the Opera is anytime he shows up within the Universal Monster pantheon, like if he shows up, you know, if they're doing Universal Monster uh, action figures or little collectibles or stamps or whatever, uh, he's kind of, like I said, on the B-Squad. So when he pops up, it's like a nice surprise, and it, it really makes me happy. Uh, I, I really like that, you know. I, if someone puts out a DVD collection and it has the Phantom on it, I'm, I'm very excited. I think one of the reasons Universal kind of um, puts this movie on the back burner often is uh, because it's in the public domain. Uh, in the 50s, they just never renewed their license on the film. So uh, anybody can put out a copy. And to that end, there's hundreds of different versions of this movies out there. Uh, just about anybody has a cheap, low rent copy put out. There's some very good prints out there. Some of them even include like original soundtracks and stuff like that. Um, very worth seeking out. I will mention too that Universal did remake this film in 43 um, in a good version, a good version of Phantom. Don't get me wrong, but um, it doesn't have this iconic Lon Chaney senior presence to it of uh, Eric the Phantom and that, that grim visage and that, you know, terrifying scowling look this makeup was very controversial in its day and it uh, shocked audiences in 1925 i don't think they were used to that kind of stuff um i'm really happy that this film has survived you know there's a lot of silent films that haven't london after midnight i'm looking at you uh some of the Gollum movies but phantom's still around spooking us to this day so here's the scan, and again, uh, I always say it, but a fun one to work on, a fun one to show you guys. I love old silent films. I love doing something a little bit different here with the art, too. Halloween is right around the corner, you guys, and I could not be more excited. Thank you all for joining me through this uh, journey in October. I've been having a really good time with it, and it's great to be putting out some videos once again, just chatting with you guys and, and talking. I love your comments, so keep them coming. Uh, feel free to like, share, and subscribe, uh, or just not hang around, man. I appreciate the views regardless of what you do. Uh, so to that end, I'll quit babbling. This is Colin. This was Markers of Monsters. Go check out the 1925 Phantom of the Opera film. And y'all have a great week. We'll see you on the next one. Good night. <laughs>